West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Live from the Cultural Center Theater in Charleston, West Virginia, welcome to the first annual awards presentation of the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame. Did you ever sleep at the foot of the bed when the weather was a whistle cold and the wind was whistling around the house and the moon was shining as gold and you keep your good warm mattress up to at the sea and pump of free? Too many kin folks on a bad night, so you went to the foot of the bed. Mention the name Little Jimmy Dickens anywhere near a country music fan and you'll see a big smile. A West Virginia original, Little Jimmy Dickens has been a regular member of the Grand Ole Opry since 1949 and at 82 still regularly hosts and performs on that American institution. His songs reflect a down-home sense of humor as well as the kind of humble beginnings that stay with a man his entire life. One look at his catalog, and it's easy to see why he earned the title of King of the Novelty Song. His hits have included Asleepin' at the Foot of the Bed, I'm Little But I'm Loud, and Out Behind the Barn. I got my education out behind the barn. I ain't foolin', no siree, no siree. That's the examination out behind the barn. And if I almost made a wreck, I'd be. His lesser-known titles include Bessie the Heifer, Queen of All the Cows, How to Catch an African Skeeter Alive, and Who Licked the Red Off Your Candy. Born in Bolt, Raleigh County, Dickens was the 13th child in a farming family. He began performing professionally and singing on a local radio station while studying at West Virginia University in the late 30s. He soon left school and began traveling the country, singing on radio shows in the Midwest under the name Jimmy the Kid. Roy Acuff heard Dickens on a radio show in Saginaw, Michigan, and invited him to sing on the Grand Ole Opry. In 1949, now using the name Little Jimmy Dickens, he became a permanent member of the Grand Ole Opry. That year, he also signed with Columbia Records and released his first single, Take an Old Cold Tater and Wait. The song became a top ten hit and launched a career that included not only novelty hits, but ballads, country, and gospel tunes. In the early 50s, he formed the Country Boys, which featured a steel guitar and two lead guitars. The group pioneered the sound of twin leads, as heard on his hit Hillbilly Fever, that would become a signature of Nashville country music. In 1965, he scored his biggest hit, May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose, which topped the country charts and crossed over to number 15 on the pop charts. Through the 60s and part of the 70s, Dickens continued to record and in 1964 became the first country artist to tour the world. In the 1990s, Dickens found a friend and supporter in fellow West Virginian Brad Paisley, one of country music's biggest stars. Dickens has appeared in a number of Paisley's music videos and along with Opry mainstays George Jones and Bill Anderson has been featured on bonus comedy tracks on several of Paisley's albums. Fittingly, little Jimmy Dickens chose to record Blind Alfred Reed's humorous Woman's Been After Man Ever Since for the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame's tribute to Blind Alfred Reed. Please help me welcome back Grammy Award winner, musician, multi-instrumentalist, and Wheeling, West Virginia native, Tim O'Brien. Thank you. I don't, I don't really feel qualified to present the award to uh, little Jimmy Dickens. Um, he's, uh, he's such an amazing talent. Um, the uh, vignette was told the, told the story. One thing it didn't mention, I don't think, is that he's he, while he's known as the novelty, uh, the king of the novelty song, he's also one of the best ballad singers that you'll ever have heard, and uh, he proves that every week on the Grand Ole Opry, where he st still continues to work. Uh, when I was growing up in Wheeling, I used to listen to the Jamboree when I was starting to play guitar. I wanted to hear the, what the pros did, and uh, I remember hearing um, Out Behind the Barn, and that was Jimmy, and I thought, that's country music, and I like that. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, Working on the Blind Alfred Reed project, it gave me this wonderful opportunity to, to be able to call people like Connie Smith up and ask them if they would help out in the project. And, 
and I was uh, afraid to call little Jimmy Dickens, but he, he made me write at home right away and uh, brought me in to his home and uh, made me feel at home and uh, at the studio. We had a little trouble getting the track. He went outside and had a cigarette, came back while the band learned it, and uh, came back after the band learned it and uh, nailed it, folks. And when he's on, on stage, you know it. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Dickens is an entertainer. He's, he eats the stage and the audience alive. And uh, he's a real inspiration to so many of us. And please make him welcome, Jimmy Dickens. <laughs> apologize for adjusting that microphone there, whoever's responsible for that. I, you just don't set them for short folks, you know, and that's the way it goes with me. I, I'm so short every time I pull my socks up, I blindfold myself, you know, it's <laughs> one of those things. Let me say a pleasant good evening to all you ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's a joy for me to be here in my home state of West Virginia. And, uh, during my career, I've had the honor and the pleasure of working concerts in virtually every major city in America and the little villages in between. And uh, in 1964, I, I had the pleasure of uh, circling the globe completely, working for the United States military and the men and women who represent our country, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, And I'm delighted to accept this award here tonight. I, during my career, I've collected a few uh, little things like this, to, uh, like this uh, beautiful award here, but none of them mean any more to me than the one that I'm holding right here in my hands tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, I'm going to try my best to sing one of Jimmy's <laughs> songs, and it tells his own story, and it's one of his compositions with Boodle O'Brien. It's called I'm Little, But I'm Loud. Lots of folks told me I was poor before I got ripe. Winter I've been picked off in the fall. I was young and I was not the bashful type. I can yell the loudest of them all. I'm little, but I'm loud. I'm poor, but I'm proud. I'm countryfied, and I don't care who knows it. I'm like a fanny rooster in a big red rooster crowd. I'm puny, short, and little, but I'm loud. Walking along behind a plow, the singing teachers always pass me by. And so I have to sing the only way that I know how. Just rear back, open up, and let her fly. I'm little, but I'm loud. I'm poor, but I'm proud. I'm country fired, and I don't care who knows it. I'm like a fanny rooster in a big red rooster crowd. I'm puny, short, and little, but I'm loud. Well, I sang a special. 
little solo song in church one Sunday morn, and I was plumb embarrassed to my skin. I hit a high note, looked around, and sure as I was born, two cows and fourteen hogs were walking in. But I'm little, but I'm loud, I'm poor, but I'm proud, I'm country fine, I don't care who knows it. I'm like a fanny rooster in a big red rooster crowd, I'm cute and short and little, but I'm loud. 